Shalom, shalom, Mishpaka. I pray all is well with each and every one of you. I pray that Yah has continued to keep you and to barack you in this season and just be with you. What a privilege, what an honor just to be able to worship at Yahuwah's throne. And I don't um, come before y'all unless y'all give me something to say. I have been really just in a place of deep, deep grief. I'm not even going to sit here and put on it. We live in such time, such a time of um, last days, people being sealed unto righteousness, some people being sealed unto damnation, some people really hitting it close with Yah. And as Yah's moving, you know, his cycle is getting ready to um, begin and restart as some people have already entered their new year. On my side, we have not yet entered the new year. But as you see, you know, Yah's hand coming for the beginning of months. Um, it's just that time of preparing one's heart, preparing one's mind, preparing one's soul, preparing one's spirit to make sure that our calling and our election is sure. So as I was on my weekly workshop, he yeah, gave me two words and it was a, a baraka, it's a baraka to repent. That was the word. It is a baraka to be able to repent. To be able to be aware of the error of one's ways. To be able to see where you have not met the mark and be able to confess that thing. And not only just confess it, but to have a new mind to turn away. I return to the right path of Yah. And as he downloaded that, and I wrote it down on my note paper. And after the class, what came to me instantly was Esau. Because we think repentance is um, something that we could take for granted. We think we always going to have time to repent and we don't we think that you know the awareness of knowing when you're in sin is something that we should just always know but it's a baraka it's a blessing it's a privilege that Yah gives his chosen it's a privilege that he gives his called but it's up to us if we apply that sometimes we push it off and like you know I'm gonna get it right another day but another day isn't promised. Another day isn't guaranteed. And uh, we have to realize the baraka that Yah gives us when he shows us ourselves. So I wanted to read uh, Hebrews 12 and 17. And I'm going to read KJV. It says, For ye know how after word when he would have inherited the blessing this is esau he was rejected for he found no place of res for he found no place of repentance though he sought it diligently with tears and let me read a different version i'm going to check um read the amplified it says for you know that later on when he wanted to regain title to his inheritance of the blessing he was rejected for he found no opportunity for repentance. There was no way to repair what he had done, no chance to recall the choice he had made, even though he sought for it with bitter tears. Certain things we do, there is no repentance. We can cry, we can grieve, and we can mourn. 
But we can't always get repentance. And you know, for the children of Yahshua, y'all, the remnant of Yah's people across the diaspora, Yah, He gave us a window. He said, I'm going to scatter y'all across the nations. That's your punishment for your rebellion, your stiff neckedness, the curse of innocent blood. You serving other Alayim. I'm going to scatter y'all and give y'all hundreds of years of punishment. But then you'll come to yourself and then you'll have this opportunity. You'll have this window of repentance. Many reject it. Many squander it. Many make eternal choices on temporary circumstance. So... As y'all show me, it's a baraka to be able to come to repentance because many don't even get that opportunity. Many can't even see the error of their ways. Many are as truly as beasts. He said they have eyes, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. That was all of us at one point in time, but he gave us a level of consciousness to be able to come to the end of ourselves. What are we going to do with that opportunity? Will we reject the cornerstone, Yahushua HaMashiach and his blood sacrifice once again? Or will we look at ourselves and repent? Will we see ourselves in error? And there's two words that stuck out to me as I looked up repentance um, and I'm going to just cover them briefly you can do your research on the Strong's but Naham that is 5162 in the Strong's and coordinates and what Naham means it means to be sorry to console oneself I'm sorry appease become a consolation change mind Comfort, comforted, comforter, console, consoling, give rest, have compassion, move to pity, regret, relent, relenting, relieve, repent, think better when the time of mourning was ended. And I wanted to bring this one out because I know many people reference to Shuba. But when you look at Nahum, I was like, wow, that's deep. Because number one, when you are able to come to a place of repentance, you are able to find comfort. The reason why, because you change the dysfunction of the mind to choose, because when you sin, it means that you have missed the mark. So when you have missed the mark, having a change of mind to be able to get return back to the mark and hit the mark is now repentance. Repentance isn't, I'm sorry, but I'm stuck here. That's not repentance. That's that's still willful sin. That's still being stuck in a cycle of sin. Repentance is being able to think and have a new mind like I am going against my father, who is Yahuwah. And I serve him. And I want to please him. And I want his ways to abide in me more than the things of this world. So I choose his ways. That's a change of mind because before I was in covenant with the things of the world. So I now choose his ways. And I don't just say that with my mouth. My actions turn back towards him. And I obey his word. That's repentance. And there's comfort in that. that you can find rest for your soul when you repent. But there's no rest for the, the, the weary, the wicked. They said there's no rest for the wicked. The reason why there's no rest is because there is no repentance. So it is a baraka 
to be able to say I am against Jah. I can see my error. It was a baraka for Nebuchadnezzar to wander as a beast for, was it two years, and then come to himself and say, there is an Alua. He was able to know that he wasn't it. He, he got rid of that narcissistic personality of thinking he was God. He was able to humble himself and return and say, I will honor the Alua who created the Shamaim and the Eretz. That's a baraka. That was a privilege that Yahuwah gave Nebuchadnezzar. This is a privilege that he's given Yashrael to be able to come to repentance at such a time as this in these last and evil days. Those in the four corners of the world who choose to obey Yah are now able to repent. But they won't last forever. This season won't last forever. The revelation says, those who are righteous, let them be righteous still. Those that are kudash, let them be kudash still. Those who are wicked, let them be wicked still. The ceiling of your state of mind. So what we call that is someone who's stuck in a wicked state of mind is a reprobate. There's no, nothing nobody can say, nothing nobody can do, nothing. So if you know that you are in error with Yah right now, take it as a baraka, take it as the blessing that it is. And don't be slothful in your repentance. Because the window closes. And you don't want to be like Esau who sought his position. His title, his, his inheritance. He wanted it. I do want that. I, I do want that inheritance. But it was too late. You let sin take you so far. So when now you see what you could have had, you can't get it. So if you are given a mind to know right from wrong, and if you are given a mind to see that you are in sin, see it as a blessing and quickly repent. Teshuba is H7725. In the Strongs, and it is to return. And it talks about how, like, the spring returns. And as the people who were lost, we are returning to Yahuwah to know who He is, to come to the end of ourselves, and to walk in obedience. So I challenge you all to see repentance as the baraka that it is. See that the time is short and don't take advantage. Much shalom, much